Ting ting in here. Threat. A lot of people ended up seeing the last video. Um, there's a lot of support. A lot of people subscribe off of that video. The thing is though, I don't usually make videos like that last video. I really think that if you subscribe to the channel, you probably want to watch this video here. I think the, the rock video that I made a few days ago, that this is a good video to get insight into the sort of videos I usually make, especially the intro for the video is probably a good insight for the sort of videos I make. If you watch that video and you feel like you don't like that stuff, you can unsubscribe from the channel. Don't worry about it. If I make any videos like this, you more than likely would get recommended them anyway. So you don't need to subscribe to the channel. I know it's weird to say, hey guys, don't subscribe to my channel, but I just feel that you might be expecting something. And I don't want to waste your time putting out videos that you don't want to watch or anything. So yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Anyway, if you watch that video to install Stable Diffusion, a lot of people were having a lot of problems. I was trying my best to address all the issues that came up, but it just got hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. So I just decided I'm going to make one video and try to address all the problems, 99% of them. This tutorial assumes you already mostly have Stable Diffusion downloaded and set up or whatever. You're just having issues with it, right? If you want to know how to install Stable Diffusion, you can go check my last video, but this is not a video on installing Stable Diffusion. It's about fixing the problems that you have with an existing install. Yeah. So how it's going to go, I'll try to address some of the common problems if SD wasn't working for you. I'll also have tips and tricks for improving the experience if it was already working for you to make it better. Even if it's working for you, this will still be a good video to watch. Also to remove the safety filter that's blocking some of the images you might be trying to make. I'm also going to talk about that as well. I updated the scripts from the last video. The high RAM one now uses the SD version from this guy. Typically when you run SD, it runs, it loads up, and then it removes itself. But this guy made it so that it stays loaded. So basically it means that it's faster, it's easier to work with. He combined image to image, which allows you to do stuff like this. He combined image to image and text to image into one interface. So you don't have to use two different things. You can just use one thing. So I updated the script to work with his version instead, since his version is just a lot better. This, however, only works with the high RAM version. The low RAM version, his script won't work with that. So I just updated the scripts for that one. I added an image to image script so you can do the stuff that you saw earlier. And I made it where you could send in multiple commands without having to relaunch the file. Also, the low RAM version wasn't made by me. I saw a lot of people saying like, oh, thanks for the low RAM version, man. It wasn't made by me. I just made the batch file that interacts with it. I didn't actually make the script itself. So I, I saw a lot of people saying that I didn't make it. This guy made it. Okay. So I just want to make that clear. Okay, good. If you're someone that uses a Mac and you wanted to get SD working, you can just go to this link here and try to check that out. If you already have SD working and you just want to see how to improve the experience for yourself, then you want to go to this time code here. I'll also have a thing in the time bar that you can just click to. However, if you don't have SD working and you want to be able to try to fix that, the easiest way to try to fix some of the problems is to not try to fix the problems. And what I mean by that, someone released a bundled version of SD. So we just download one EXE and it just worked. I haven't tried it myself because it's already working for me. And the code also isn't open source. So you can't actually see what it is that the person did. However, some people have tried it who were trying every single thing and it wasn't working for them and it finally got to work. You can go to this link here. You just click on this one. You click on download. Again, it should just be a one click installation. So nothing too complicated. Okay. Uh, just know that with this version, some features aren't in there as yet. And the developer admittedly has said that it's a, an alpha. So expect that certain things might work. You might have certain issues and stuff. So just, just keep that in mind. If that's not working for you, you want to try something else. You can also try to use Google Colab. If you already know what Google Colab is and you don't want to use that, you just want to try to fix the problems with your PC, then you can just skip to this point here. However, if you want to use um, SD on a cloud computer from Google, and that's enough for you, I'm just going to show you how to do that real quick. You want to go to this link here. That'll take you to this page and it's relatively simple. All you have to do, well, first off, you'd have to have a Google account. Also, you have to open a Hugging Face account. They updated the collab. You don't need Hugging Face anymore in order to use it. So disregard any Hugging Face related things that Ting Ting says in this video. You want to click on the Fuser Setup. Click. Yeah, it's going to download files here. So it's going to it's going to have to download some files here. OK, you'll know it's finished when you see the the tick here. And then, yeah, now you should be able to run. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to type, um, what, dog photo. You can adjust the steps here. I think the base is 145, which is kind of high. So I'm going to drop this. Okay, good. And then you simply just click this when you're ready. Yeah, so you're going to see this here. Just going to wait a little bit. Okay, you can see it down here. It starts generating. So first image of the dog there. That's the first dog photo. So I set it to do three. I go to drive, my drive, AI picks, and then it should be inside of here. 
the other imp oh this is the upscale this is there's also an upscaler built into this as well so the dog was upscaled another upscaled version another dog photo another upscaled version the only things about google drive to know is that you don't just permanently gain access to this it's free yeah but you don't permanently gain access to it how it works is i think is every 12 hours or so they'll kill an instance also if you've been idle for too long they'll kill an instance what that means is you can come back and set up again but you'll have to reinstall and do all of that stuff over okay all right so if you don't want to use the install version or you don't want to use collab that's not working for you you just want to solve the issues you had with your install the first one is if you're getting green images you want to type in when you're sending your prompt in here type dash dash precision full if you do dash dash precision full it should fix that problem another one if you're seeing errors like no module found called taming git missing stuff like that you more than likely need to install git what you would want to do is go to your stable diffusion folder your main folder with all of the files go to your environment.yam open that up in a text editor and you want to go to the part here that says dependencies go under and then add dash space git okay after you do that make sure to save the file save it close back out now you want to go to your start menu type in anaconda prompt if you don't see this then again this video is for people who already have stable diffusion mostly installed if you don't know go back and watch my last video that will explain all of this stuff you want to open the anaconda prompt and you want to cd into the folder that you were in before the folder that has sd in it so you want to go cd take your stable diffusion folder space put this here now you'll be inside of the stable diffusion folder what, what you want to do now is because you've edited the environment file that's a list of things that gets installed you want to reinstall your conda environment or recreate it the thing that you create you should have already done if you're watching this video you want to recreate but before you do it you need to delete the old one first because if you try to create a new one it's going to tell you it already exists so do conda env remove dash n ldm when you do this it's going to delete the old one after that is deleted you now want to come and go conda env create dash f environment.yaml which is the file here that you edited thing is you want to make sure that you're in the stable the fusion folder here if you're not there this will cause issues okay make sure you're in the stable diffusion folder and do this then press enter you'll reinstall anaconda now on a, fr at a fresh install and it should this time end up working so that's another problem people had if you're still having problems another weird one the model file itself some people were actually getting corrupted version of it so if you think you're just having issues you don't know what it is try re-downloading the model file it could be that it got corrupted that's what's causing your problem so re-download it rename it back to model space 1.3 and put it in the folder and then try to run again if you're still having issues after trying all of those things first go back make sure that you have anaconda installed in the base location to make sure you cd to the folder when you're actually going to install and start all the way over just uninstall everything and come back you might have made a mistake somewhere along the line and you're not sure where just start over uninstall everything if you're still having issues even then come to the comments leave a comment i'll try to see if i can sort out whatever it is so by this if you're watching to this point in the video then you probably already have a working stable diffusion installation and you're watching to see just how to improve that so what i did was i added an image to image script as well so that you can also do image to image and i also updated my the high ram script to support the dream script from this guy implicitly also gives it image to image capabilities as well along with a better interface and just a better way of interacting with it this guy's script i noticed the main one that's online right now is actually causing problems i tried to install it and there was a bunch of broken things and i tried to fix them and i had to download a slightly older version that was more stable and i just packaged that one so i just that's the one that's in this file there's a bunch of new features that he's gonna add into the later version you can update this later but as of right now it's causing too many issues so i just decided it would be easier to use a working version rather than trying to like mess around with this version that isn't 100 there so you're gonna want to go to this link and download the new sd files you want to open up the zip file that you get there so right here i have the zip file with the other files in them the new files that i made all of these files here most of these were made by this guy the only ones that i made were like these ones the bat files in them and i also just pulled out some things to just make it easier because typically it's a little bit harder to add his thing in you have to copy some things to some areas and stuff so i just added everything so it's easy if you have installed using the tutorial that i have i've already set everything up so it's an easy to to make work all you have to do is just take all the files from here and just move them into this folder it's going to ask you to replace some files just replace them okay fine you're not finished yet what you want to do now is go to the anaconda prompt again 
So make sure it's Anaconda prompt, CD into the stable diffusion folder, your environment.yaml. One of the files that I replaced was the environment.yaml file. So this has some new dependencies for this guy's script specifically. So what you need to do here is just go conda env update. So this means you don't have to recreate the environment to do any of that stuff. It's just going to download the new files and then use those. Dash F, whoa, environment.yaml. You see this here collecting package metadata. So now it's downloading the new files in them. You just want to wait for this to finish here. Okay, now you want to do conda activate LDM. Now what you want to do, you're going to do Python preload underscore models dot py. So that's this file that we copied from the dude script. We copied this into here. Preload models dot py. That's the file you want to do. Just press enter. You'll see some errors here, but they actually said to ignore it. But you just want to wait here. Success close this off. And now if you run the high RAM stable diffusion here, you'll see initializing. Be patient. Assuming you followed everything, you should see it start loading here. I am recording, so this should take longer than normal. So keep that in mind. I realize also the video might start getting choppy. I noticed that that happens. Um, so I don't know if it's choppy right now. It might be choppy. The cool thing about this is you don't have to dash dash prompt or anything. If I want to get a dog photo, cat photo, right? I can just press that. It immediately starts here. Yeah, it's definitely slower. I wonder how long it's going to take. Yeah, because I'm recording, it's slower. Okay, I turned off a preview window and it seems to be working better now. I'm sure the video is kind of crunchy right now still, but st uh, this is, it's working better now. Okay, so it's, it finished. Now we're going to go to outputs, image samples, and you can see this is a generated cat photo. Also, another thing that it can do as well, it adds in this file. So this gives you like the same, the prompt that you use, the seed for the file, the CFG, the width, the height, all the settings that you use to create this cat, it will be inside of the file, right? And the cool thing is I can just come back and I can say like, well, another cat photo. I can just do it again. Let's do another one. And it just starts immediately. It just immediately starts. There's no kind of delay or anything because the model is already loaded. Again, as I said, without recording, it's faster than this, I mean to say. It's like, yeah, you see, I just get a different cat photo here. And you can just come back and keep doing this. I can go, uh, you also have the ability to go through your last command. So if I press up, I can go back through. You can do like multiple images. So I can say cat photo and then go dash N. Very similar to the stable diffusion discord if you use that. Five. And yeah, this goes and it will generate the first one, the next one. And then I can come back. I can change settings. I can edit all the features and stuff. Um, I'm not going to wait for this to finish because I think you guys get the idea. Oh. Hey guys, when Ting Ting in recorded the video, he forgot to say something. So I'm just here to try to fix his mistake. So first off, with the new script that the thing was updated to use, these are the commands to access all the various features. Also, another thing that Ting Ting in forgot to mention was image to image, which he said he was going to mention, but he ended up actually not doing it. So I'm actually going to have to do it now to fix his mistake. Image to image with the high RAM version. What you're going to want to do, dash I, and keep in mind, this has to be capital because it's case sensitive. And then you link to whatever image you want to use. So in this case, I have an image in the folder, cone.png right there. So if I just type cone.png, there's a dog barking like Jesus Christ which is this image. So this is a slotting image. The prompt in this version needs to be the first thing that you type. I will type ice cream cone. It doesn't need to be in quotes and I don't have to type dash dash prompt. Octane render 3D. Enter. It starts to take the image here. The image that you input needs to be a multiple of 64 in both dimensions. So 512 by 512 is a multiple of 64. If it's not, you'll get an error. So make sure both of them can be divided by 64. And also make sure the image isn't too big. Otherwise, you get an out of memory error because you are you can see the image compared to the starting image. So this is a generated image. This is a starting image. So basically it takes this and tries to make it. It takes the, the prompt and tries to combine it with this and it creates an image like this. So that's what image to image and that's how to make it work. You want to click this. And now for this version, you need to be more verbose. So you want to type dash dash prompt for your prompt. Let's say cone again. So I'm going to say ice 3D. And then to select the image, you need to type dash dash init image. There needs to be a dash in between there. And also you need to use a quote if you're using this one. Ow. Now I want to go cone.png like I did for the last one. And same thing, I enter. It loads up. It starts processing the image. Okay, so the low RAM one just finished rendering the image. You can see here, it asked me enter prompt and options. So before you would have to relaunch the file and both of the files got updated, right? So it's not just this one. The other one, the other low RAM 
script got updated as well. And you can just keep entering over and over and you don't have to like reload the file like how it was before. Yeah, I forgot that this one generates multiple images at a base, but you can see the thing here. This is one image, this is another one, this is another one, this is another one, this is another one. Again, it takes the style of the first image, tries to match it up with the prompt and create an image that meshes them. That's what image to image is. That's how to use image to image, both with the low RAM and the high RAM version. I'm so angry that Ting Ting had to make me come and record this, but here you go. The easiest way to get rid of the safety filter, if you upgrade to the high RAM version, you actually get rid of the safety filter because the high RAM version in this thing does not have the safety filter in it. So you automatically remove it if you use that. And also if you use the low RAM version, it also doesn't have it in it either. However, if you're someone and you are using traditional SD, it's relatively simple. You just want to go down, you go scripts, text, to image, you want to edit this. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy here. You can just use like notepad. So you'll be in here, scroll down where you'll see, scroll down to line here and you simply change this line here to this. Then you save the file and there you go. Guys, hopefully you liked the video. If you like this video, you might want to check out my other videos that I have made. As I said, make sure if you missed in the beginning, I said that people might have liked the last video, but that's not the sort of video I usually make. You probably want to watch the other videos on my channel to get a good sense of the sort of content that I make to know if that's content that you would even like before you subscribe. Yeah, and if that's the case, if you like that content, we're glad to have you and thanks for subscribing to the channel. Okay, good. Check you on the next one.